Yes, I know it's been a very, very long time since I've had the chance to do a video, but better late than never. So to get things started, uh, I thought I'm gonna do a video on aspirin. Why aspirin, you ask, when I've been doing all my videos and diet and exercise and things like that? Well, because aspirin has been taking a little bit of a hit or a bad rap, if you will, in the press as of 2019. So let me go back in time and try to give you some information about aspirin and then walk you through the new guidelines and explain to you whether or not this applies to you. Before we go in that direction, it's very important that you hear this disclaimer. Please understand that everything in this video is purely for informational and educational purposes. It should not be construed as medical advice. In fact, the decision on starting any medication or discontinuing any medication is between you and your physician and should not be made on the basis of this video. So once you've gotten the information from this video, you should go to your doctor, speak to him or her about changing aspirin if that's something you desire but please don't make any changes based on the content on this video alone. Now, let's get started. So as all of you know, aspirin has been widely used by cardiologists for the better part of the last three or four decades. In fact, ever since aspirin was discovered in the 1800s, it has been widely used as a pain control agent and as an anti-inflammatory agent. And in the 1980s, we found out that aspirin also controls the aggregation or clumping together of platelets, which can form a blood clot. So when the idea that aspirin might help control blood clots was put to the trial, it was actually pretty clear that aspirin did prevent heart disease. But now fast forward to 2019 and the climate has changed a little bit. The most recent guidelines that came out of the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiologists has shed some new light on whether or not aspirin is broadly and equally applicable to everybody. So let me try to explain what the new guidelines say and then you can decide how best to sort out whether or not it applies to you. The way I look at these new guidelines is by putting people into two categories. The first group of people are the people who have had any event for which they require aspirin as treatment. So if you've had a heart attack, a stroke, if you've had peripheral vascular disease or anything that you require aspirin as a treatment modality, you should continue to be on aspirin regardless of your age, unless instructed otherwise by your physician. So the worst thing that I encounter in my office are people who've had two stents and have heart disease come to my office and say, they saw this new article that says that aspirin doesn't work so they took themselves off of it. Please do not do that. If you've had any reason to be treated with aspirin, stent, heart attack, heart disease, peripheral vascular disease, stroke, continue taking aspirin. Now, the other group of people are the people who have not had any event that requires aspirin as a treatment, but I've been merely taking aspirin as a preventive measure. So if you're one of those people who have been taking aspirin purely for the sake of preventing a future heart attack or a heart disease or a future stroke, then you can be a little bit more nuanced. So the easiest way to look at this is to look at this in terms of age groups. Anyone under 50, not much benefit in taking aspirin. Anybody over 70, not much benefit in taking aspirin if you don't have any reason to be treated by aspirin. So if you're taking it for primary prevention and you have nothing going on, and you're either under the age of 50 or over the age of 70, then the guidelines say you can get off of aspirin. But when we look at the group of people between the ages of 50 and 70, they still can benefit from being on aspirin purely for prevention. And that decision is based uh, primarily on their risk factors. So if you're someone who has adequate cardiovascular risk factors, so let's think about it. If you have high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, you're a smoker, or you have a very strong family history of heart disease, or your doctor has ordered a coronary CT scan or some other test that suggested that you may have a propensity for heart disease. If you're in any one of those categories and you and your doctor have discussed what your risk of having heart disease is, and that risk is substantial, then you will benefit from being on aspirin for the sake of prevention. If you are not someone who has heart disease or you don't have any of those risk factors, then you potentially can be off of aspirin. 
But again, remember, that discussion, especially if you're between ages 50 and 70, is a discussion that you should have with your doctor, not to be made by yourself. So I hope this gives you some clarity in your decision-making process and gives you some tidbits to talk about with your doctor during your next visit. As always, have a happy and healthy heart. Thank you.